to thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. That sounds like a good verse to me. I think it is. <coughs> it has been for a long time. And we, were, we even went into some different translations of it yeah. in the last series, Jack. That's right. And besides the Amplified? Yes. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, old friend. Oh, and it, Young's Literal and Darby's and, oh. and the several different ones. Well, welcome to the program, Great and Mighty Things. And uh, you people that are regulars, as watchers, uh, put on your VCR, tape it, go back and critique us. Uh, you may miss some things that we go through because I don't, you know, sometimes we get carried away, really get to moving. Uh, but you need to glean what God has for you. And uh, just to reintroduce who we are, uh, we have a new uh, participant in this set, of this series, from the last ones that we were dealing with. Uh, my name is Reverend Bob Butler from Let's Iowa Goppy and Praise Fellowship, and on my right is my regular co-host. Uh, Reverend Kendall Hetrick from Last Adam Ministries. What's your address now, Carmen? Strongers. Carmen. Carmen. We'll still get it as Center Strongers, too. But okay. Yeah. Uh, all the male people in my part of the country. They all know where you're at. I don't know where to find It's kind of like us. You, you mail it to yeah. Let's uh, God be praise, and we'll get it. Mm -hmm. uh, I might inject this before I introduce uh, Jerry, our guest on, the, on your right, uh, from Grace Fellowship Church in Iowa City. <laughs> Before we really get into introducing him, I'll, I'll make this comment that our box has changed. Our box number has gone from box D at the Let's Post Office to Post Office Box 4. Uh, 4 must have some sort of significance, but <laughs> right offhand it doesn't trigger the mechanism to tell comes me right what it is. Comes right after 3. Comes right after 3, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but God has, his numbers are significant. I, I don't remember what 4 is, but... Uh, with all that trivia out of the way, uh, welcome mm -hmm. to our program with us, Jerry. Glad to have you over again. Good to participate with us. Uh, we enjoy having him come. He adds something to the program every time he sits in. Uh, we have some good times. You may not recognize it, but we have some good times making mm -hmm. these programs yeah. uh, to benefit you. We, we get benefit from it, but we, the main reason for doing this is to benefit you that watch. And I know there's some pastors that watch because they've told me so. Mm -hmm. And if you need some preaching material for this Sunday, uh, we're going to be talking about the covenant. Covenants, I should say. There's more than one to deal with when we're dealing with the Bible. So uh, w with all that out of the way, uh, when I was praying about this from the last program we made when we introduced covenant and we mentioned the definition to cut or divide, that comes from a Hebrew word in the Old Testament, which was dealing with covenant, uh, and they, they define it a little different than they do in the New Testament or in the New Covenant, the words that are used there, which is in Greek. And uh, in Hebrew, it, it has to do with cut or divide, and we explained a little bit about that last time, where the Indians actually cut their wrists and mingle the blood and create this covenant or agreement with each other, with the tribes and so on. <laughs> then the other word that they use uh, is league. Uh, now we we relate leagues to you're in a bowling league or you're in a little baseball league or we relate league that way. Well, uh, in, in the Bible, the word league is used probably more with more commitment. I'm not sure the words I really want to use here. But when you're in league with something, it's a little more of a sincerity in the league than it would be a baseball league. I mean, you go, you participate. Well, the league that God's talking about here is a little deeper than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you got anything you want to add to that? Because I really haven't defined it the way that I think we really need to. In your analogy of a bowling league, you have teams. Yes. And there's, there's some camaraderie there, which is enveloped with the league. There's uh, an active participation among all those that are in that league yes. doing the same thing. And with covenant, you have that aspect type because thing. it's where two or more people come together for the benefit of both, and then they can work off each other as a team, more or less. The strengths of one overrides the weakness of the other, yes. and vice versa. So. There's a lot of aspects there. With now, with well, when you said that, you triggered something. Because you mentioned teams, teams mm -hmm. in the league. And we've been talking about intimacy. 
Yeah. Well, if you're in a team in a league, mm -hmm. there's probably more intimacy in that team than there is with the league in general. Mm -hmm. And so I can see now where God, where you use the word league, where you get you get what we would call a core group yeah. or a team, mm -hmm. where there's more uh, intimate relationship with those people than there is the whole of the group. Uh, mm -hmm. Within the structure of a church, even, you'll have people who fellowship together more than maybe they fellowship with someone else. Not that they don't love those other brothers and sisters, but there's more of an intimate relationship. Uh, like you guys have known each other a lot longer than I've known Bob or I've known you. So there is more of a fellowship within that relationship than there is with me. That's one of the things uh, I've got here uh, jotted down in my notes. And, and I, here again, I borrowed this. I, sometimes I come up with uh, originals <laughs> with original things but you know I, I read enough that when I find somebody that um, that has a very good definition that I like I just you know I said well, I, I, I like that I mean you know if you got yeah. a good definition don't write it in your books I mean because if I read your book I'll, I'll get it and 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 Dr. Bill Bozanski and his uh, he got a wonderful little book the uh, uh, the power of the blood covenant mm -hmm. and uh, and, and we'll get into more of that. <laughs> and and he, he's, he makes this statement, and, and, as a kind of a, and I like it, and it's the establishing of a relationship that is not there by nature. Mm, when we come, in, when yeah. we come yeah. into, a, yeah. into a covenant, yeah. we come into a, yeah. uh, a, a relationship that's not there by nature. You know, it's, not, it's not a relationship that we have by family, mm -hmm. like, like with us. We have a relationship to that covenant, but it's not there. It's not a natural relationship. And, and I think, you know, Ah, that worked. Now, um, you know, there again, that's just a base to build on because uh, uh, you go from there in, in a lot of different di directions because there again, covenant, I mean, <laughs> covenant runs through the Bible front to back. all there. I mean, you front know, the whole thing is God's, God's building a relationship with us that is not there by nature. And, and we want to get into some of these in a little more depth than we have in past programs, but we've kind of glossed over and and just taking some of the bits and pieces and injected them into the topic we were talking about. But I think with this session and these sessions we're going to be making in the future, that we, we, when you get done watching all of these programs, we want you to have a firm grasp on the significance of the covenant that we live in. I mean, that's the ultimate gain, uh, uh, the ultimate aim of what we want to accomplish after when we go through all of these programs dealing with these different aspects uh, of a covenant. Now, we've been talking about definition at this point. Well, when you're going to talk about something, you really need a definition uh, to start with. You know, what does that mean? Well, there's several different meanings depending on whether you're dealing with the Hebrew or dealing with the Greek or dealing with the English. Uh, when, when we talk about the, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, let's go back and look at Genesis 6.18 because in the definition that I was reading from, uh, in the Old Testament with the Hebrew that was explaining this covenant word. And, and by the way, in the Greek or Hebrew, it doesn't use the word covenant as we use it. It, described, it describes covenant by using a lot of other words mm -hmm. to explain what it is. Uh, like Kendall just mentioned this definition, Bill, B Bill Bozanski. Uh, is that the right one? Yeah, Bill Bozanski. Okay. Uh, so, so really to study them out, you, we say... Well, love in English is one word. Well, in, in the Greek, it's, it's more than one word, but there's different meanings. Well, our love means all these things. Well, it's the same with covenant. Uh, there are different words to explain to try and get across the comprehension of what we're talking about, the significance of what it is. Genesis 6.18. Uh, this is uh, dealing with Noah, and he says, But with thee will I establish my covenant. Now, this is God talking to Noah. He says, Thou shalt come unto the end of the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And every living thing, am I in the right chapter? Yes, yes I am. And every, living, and every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall bring into the ark to keep them alive and with thee. They shall be male and female. Well, back in verse 18, it says, But with thee I will establish my covenant. In other words, he's going to form a league with Noah to accomplish what he's told Noah he needs to do. Mm -hmm. In other words, God is going to be Noah's partner, if you will, yeah. to accomplish the things on earth that need to be done that God has to use mankind to accomplish them. Now, Noah 
is the only one on the earth that, well, in another verse it says, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Or the the Stadler brothers made a song about that. Mm -hmm. Well, the grace that he found in the eyes of the Lord is one of the things that is relevant to this covenant that God made with Noah. Yeah. Now, you want to build on any of that? <laughs> we, we could go a yeah. long ways here. <laughs> Keep in mind the main thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh boy, I Go guess. <laughs> well, there again, when, when we get into covenant, you were talking there about the grace. Uh, when you get into covenant, especially covenant relationship dealing with God, you can't deal with covenant without dealing with grace. Absolutely. Because it is God's, uh, it, is, it is God that is the instigator, the, the, the one the that is desirous of that. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, through the New Testament, it, 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 it comes out more clear, but. But the whole way through the Bible, we see God God reaching after man. And as we see, well, the Adamic covenant, the Noahic covenant, mm -hmm. and, and on down through uh, the, the Abrahamic covenant, we see God is at work to, to get into this relationship with, with humankind, with his creation. And, and, you know, it's that grace that is um, that it's working uh, there again. And I borrow my definition of grace from Charles Capps because I like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when I heard Brother Charles say that, oh, I don't know, eons ago almost now, uh, that it's God's willingness to expend his riches and resources in our behalf. Mm -hmm. I thought, That's yeah, good. you know, he is willing. He And, and we see that willingness yes. the whole way through. Uh, God is more willing to, um, to, to, to answer our prayers, to meet our needs, to bless us than we are to receive it. I mean... <laughs> You know, the whole way through, God is pursuing man to, to draw them back to himself and to, and to, to bless them. And, uh, and that's, where, that's what grace is, you know. When I think about the word covenant, you mentioned the word partnership. Mm -hmm. That's part of that whole uh, aspect of covenant. And what I, the picture I always get is that God is the senior partner. Mm -hmm. And I'm way down there on the low on the totem pole, but he is there, always reaching out, just like you were talking about, to bless, to to nurture, to encourage, to, yes. yeah, to do whatever it takes to exactly. get you on a higher plane. Exactly. That's why he gave us his word. Exactly. Which is to establish the word is to establish the covenant which God wanted with us, the that, partnership. It would be okay. real easy right now just to jump over to the New Testament. Yeah, I mean, it would be, be so easy. We can't. <laughs> but, but we're not ready to go there yet. I would make this suggestion to people that are watching right now. Get your little notebook or piece of paper and write down these words that come up that we're talking about that are relevant to covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry mentioned partnership or partners. Uh, Gary, I mean, Kendall. Yeah, Gary's not here. No, Gary. Gary's not here. <laughs> another word that was mentioned was grace. And then the definition, league. Mm -hmm. And another definition we talked about is cut or divide. That means, uh, now when you say cut and divide, most people think that's separating, but really isn't. When you're cutting or dividing, you're cutting a covenant. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're establishing a covenant. Right. There used to be an old phrase, uh, and you don't hear much about it anymore. It said, well, I'm going to cut a covenant with them. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? Well, in today's language, it doesn't mean much. But in the old language, it meant if you were going to cut a covenant with somebody, you were going to form this relationship, this partnership with that other person, which was never going to be separated or divided or, or uh, hindered by either party. And that's, that's a very, it's like a marriage covenant. Yeah. And here we could take off on yeah. another direction. But, yeah. uh, it's, it's a partnership that never to be divided. Now, we know there's divorce and stuff like this, but we're talking in God's utopia, if you will, yeah. the way God intended all these things to happen. Uh, covenant of marriage is, is one covenant that's mentioned that started out in Genesis, but there's a lot more there that, that God created with man. The one here in Noah that was created because of his... Uh, to establish. To establish yeah. these other covenants to come along later, each one progressing to a higher level. Mm -hmm. Ken, Kendall mentioned that. Yeah. That when the covenant we live in, when you go back to Hebrews, is the top of the pile, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We're in the best covenant that man has ever had with God at this point in time. Until and if, and I doubt that the board doesn't say that he will, create a better covenant than the one we've got. 
don't know how it'd get much better. I, don't know how it'd get much better. <laughs> I, I, I just don't. The Bible doesn't say there's going to be one more after this one. No. Well, the only way that it is better is that we are set free from from the confines of this well, natural realm. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and boy, I mean. I'm yeah. looking for that one. Well, you know, that's fast uh, approaching. Mm -hmm. and, and here you go. We've said it a lot of times. Uh, of course, Jerry doesn't always get to sit in with us, but we've said a lot of times, and and you might be new to the program, that God is a God of progressive revelation. Yes. God starts out, and, and that's why as you read the Bible, you see God begins uh, with Adam to get his toe back in, to get a foothold back into this earth that 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 was you know sold into sin and slavery, and and, and he he begins. Small, you know, uh, just like the point of that wedge. And, and but as as he gets a little farther in, uh, he he reveals himself more. Well, the way that God reveals Himself and the, and the way He reveals of His nature is by establishing a covenant with various Bible characters as He goes down through with the Adamic right. covenant, the Noahic covenant, the, the Abrahamic covenant, and then as it progresses on down through through David and and the, some of the others, uh, we see that uh, as we see that. Uh, Unfold, and as we see that build, God is is expanding that and getting more uh, opportunity to come into uh, into uh, the onto the scene. I guess would be the way to say it. Onto the scene in man's behalf. And, at a greater way, at a greater level, yeah, each time He does this. Yes, I would suggest your people do something, do this also uh, with your concordance. If you don't have a concordance, get a concordance, and, and take the word covenant. And go through all of the scriptures that are listed there under the word covenant and read what each one has to say about it. Now, you're, you're going to get a limitation here. I understand that because we have the same problem when we're, when we're researching to uh, deal with these subjects on TV because it leads you in off into other areas. And if you try and zero in on just the one word, it's very difficult mm -hmm. not to incorporate these other things. That's why I said make a list and add these other words that are tied in with this. Partnership, grace, righteousness. I mean, we could go on and on. We create a nice long list for you that all have to do with the covenant that we live in, the covenant that they live in. Uh, and some of the benefits of the original covenants here in Genesis uh, through the Old Testament are still valid for us today. They have not been uh, obliterated, they've been made better. Kendall said something that just exploded <laughs> in me a minute ago when you were talking when you were kind of talking about how God had to get back in there. The only way he could do it was to get a covenant back with Adam mm -hmm. in order to give him legal access to this world that Adam had just committed yeah, treason on. That's right. That's so right. he had to establish that covenant that's back right. in order to have any legal right within that in this world now. Well, see, we get off, people say, well, you know, you get to be legalistic. Well, God is legalistic. I mean, God is a God of order. God is a God of law. He won't break his own law. That's right. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. There's a, you know, there's a song that says, well, God can do anything. No, there's things that God can't do. That's right. Uh, at Kendall's church, we used to sing a th song mm -hmm. about things God That's can't right. do. Uh, but there's things that he does cannot do. Fail and cannot lie. Say again? Yeah. Cannot fail and cannot lie. That's right. Can't get a lot of people to pay their tithe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know you were right. I got your medal in there. Okay. <laughs> oh, glory. That's true as it is. It's true. I mean, that's true as it is. It's true. Uh, well, go ahead. I'm just going to say, let me, let me throw this in while I was thinking about it, too. When, when God actually came back in the scene after he'd rebuked the devil and, and told him what he had to do and, and, and confronted uh, Adam and everything, he made uh, with the cutting of the animals blood. He gave their skins for a covering. Now what a lead in. Yeah, what, that, what a lead in. That's where I was. That's where I was trying to go. It was like I said, it just exploded on me. I thought, wow. But that that is where God stepped in, made that covenant with Adam and Eve, and cut the the animals' skin. Now somewhere down the line. Adam had to bring those animals to him, or or whatever, but the Adam or the the animals were killed, and the covenant was cut. Yeah, and blood. Yeah. That, that's just that's good that you did this because that leads us up to another uh, aspect of covenant, and that is the binding or confirming agent of any covenant. Mm, yeah. Now, uh, 
with with and between man. I get to turn my page of notes. Oh, I don't have a leaf. <laughs> I haven't even got that. That means we're progressing. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> with, any, with any covenant between men or human beings, mm -hmm. uh, today we use a signature. When you go down and buy a car on time or you buy your house on time or anything you buy where somebody else finances it, he has you take this piece of paper and sign your name on the dotted line. Mm -hmm. You have made a covenant with that supplier to provide the finances so that you could buy what you're buying, and your signature says, okay, we're in covenant, until I pay you what you have coming, and then we dissolve the covenant, and what I bought is mine. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we do that as mankind. Our covenant binding agent is our signature. Or, in the olden days, instead of a signature, they would use uh, an oath. Mm -hmm. They would make an oath between each other. Now, we never really talked about oaths and vows on our programs before, but I did a teaching series one time on vows and oaths. Mm -hmm. And when you make a vow or an oath to God, you better not break it. Mm -hmm. But when you make a vow or an oath to another human being, uh, they are broken. Mm -hmm. uh, we, get, we get into married vows. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, part of the binding agent mm -hmm. part of, you notice I said, yeah. to that marriage covenant. The vow that's made as God is your witness. You're making the vow to your partner, both partners. But then, uh, and that's part of their binding agent, but there's more to it than that, which I don't want to go down that doorway right now. But, uh, moving along then, another, one, another way men create, and, and Kendall mentioned, Jerry mentioned it, a covenant with somebody else is they have what you need and you have something they need. Mm -hmm. Now they may have uh, wealth that they don't use, and you may have a talent or something that they need. Well then you can make a covenant with each other and the one with the power is the motivating force of creating that covenant. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier two nations that come together that are not at war. One may have a stronger army than the other. Says, "I'll protect you, and and I can, you know, we can share goods, mm -hmm. and I will be your defense mechanism because you don't have a big army. You don't have all these other benefits." Well, it's kind of this way uh, when man creates covenant with somebody else. But, and Jerry mentioned this. Between God and man, the binding agent is always, underline always, mm -hmm. blood. Now, <laughs> when man and God had a, a covenant, a pile of stone was built to honor God and remind the man of that covenant. And I want to go back to Genesis 31 uh, with that one. And along with this... Uh, What he was talking about with this blood, I, I don't know if I got that in my notes from this time, but uh, he was talking about uh, God clothing Adam and Eve with animal skins, and that was the first shedding of blood, animal's blood, to bring back a covenant that Abraham, or Abraham, that Adam had willfully given over to the devil. He had, he had broken the covenant with God, transgressed, as you will, so God came back and said, and they said, well, we're naked. As the story goes, you know, and they tried to hide from God. Well, God knew where they were. And instead of coming back and repenting, they were trying to hide from God and broke the covenant. So God says, all right. And he shed the animal's blood, clothed them with animal skins so they could have this relationship restored to them. And, then, and, and that was done because of the shedding of blood of the animal. That's where we get into the Old Testament where they sacrifice the animals to cover man's sin because of the life of the blood of the animal. And we want to get into this in a little more depth mm -hmm. because this is part of a very significant part of covenant. Mm -hmm. okay. Because the blood between uh, is, the, is the binding agent from God to man, but in that case he was using animal's blood. Now we know in the covenant that he made with us, he didn't use animal's blood, he used Jesus' blood. And we'll get into that later on as we go through this. But uh, it's so deep, and there's so much to be shared to grow through this. Uh, did we find Genesis 31 yet? Mm -hmm. We did. We don't <laughs> know about it. What scripture reference? Go, go, go ahead. 51, 52, and 53. Okay. Okay. Now, remember I said that uh, when man made a covenant with other men, mm -hmm. uh, 
there was certain things that were done, but when man made a covenant with God, oh, can't be already. <laughs> when God made a covenant with man, uh, there's a pile of stones or an altar, so to speak, mm -hmm. that was built in honor of the covenant and to remind man of that covenant. Well, we see that here. Go ahead, somebody read it. 52. 51, 2, and 3. Okay, but you don't want to forget 54 because that's important too. Right, right. Let's and talk about these three first. And Laban <laughs> said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt thee, me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, and the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Go ahead. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. The, the, talking about a covenant meal. Yes. Mm -hmm. covenant. With that sacrifice. Okay, see, there's another one you need to put down here. With, with the covenant, sometimes there's a meal involved. Mm -hmm. and, and the Anybody? meal that we deal with is called communion. Mm -hmm. I'll slip that in. Oh yeah, that's we the yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Fill up the last four minutes. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fill up the last four minutes. Yeah. Go, go ahead. <laughs> well, here again, you know, as, as as we as we see this, I mean, we're still building, uh, we're still yes. building foundation because yes. there's there's so much that, oh. that's involved in here. Uh, in the old covenant, uh, uh, in the old testament, the old covenant, uh, the 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 idea of sin in that was the breaking. Of the covenant, you know, yes. was, was that was the idea between sitting now, because that was dealing in the old covenant. Uh, you remember, we're dealing with action, where in the in the new covenant, God begins to deal with intentions. That's right. Yes. And, right. Uh, That's good. And, and so, so uh, yeah. when God come, I mean, you know, there again, uh, we said go back through and, and look and through. Well, uh, every word of the Bible is important, and when you see a word that's in there uh, two or three hundred times, which covenant is. Uh, yes. You see how how uh, you know uh, pervasive the the idea of covenant is in the in the old and the new uh, testament, which is times. old and new covenants, mm -hmm. and 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 so as you see that as you see that unfold in there, um, it it touches just almost everything that's mm -hmm. uh, that's God. Well, everything that God does and has done for man since the fall has been done through covenant. As Jerry Absolutely. said, that first thing that he the mm -hmm. first. And it's interesting. The first thing that you see after the fall is God comes in instantly with redemption. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I'm going to restore this relationship. You know. Exactly. And bang, and then, and which is part part of the the aspect of the one that's stronger mm -hmm. restores right. and builds up the one who has less. That's right. And that's that's his heart's intention, is to bless us in every way. So when when he does, he's just fulfilling his part. Of the bargain or yeah. of the covenant which he made with man. Yeah. It, it, oh wow! <laughs> it, it, it gets powerful. Oh, it's as powerful. We go through. And, yeah. and if people would get really get a hold of this, really get a hold of this, I mean, uh, it's gonna. There's an aspect there we, we talk about restoring. It, it's it's a attitude that God has of restoring until it's too good to be true, and yet he still continues to bless. That's right. You know, it, exceedingly abundantly. Yeah, exceedingly abundantly. Yeah. Well, there again, I mean, you know, mm. there are some of us that have relationships. I mean, I, I can call Bob, I know I can call Bob 24 hours a day, you know, I mean, if he's, if he's where he can get to me, I can call him up and say, Bob, I need you. And, and in whatever time it takes mm. him to get there, he'll be there. Uh, the, the same me with, with him, you know. Uh, and, and when we re if we get a hold, you know, if we can wrap our thinking around mm -hmm. the fact that God is that same way. Oh, when yeah. I need Him, He's you know, it don't take Him long to get there. <laughs> uh, exactly. And He has got a lot more resources, and He's mm -hmm. willing to spend them all in my behalf. Uh, you know, man. I mean, you know, when we realize we've got that kind of favor with the man that has the power. Uh, it, it will, I guarantee, it'll revolutionize your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you will not be the same once you get that concept down within you. If you talk about intimacy, which we have from mm -hmm. past programs, mm -hmm. when you have that covenant, man, you have that intimacy. Yeah. Uh, and, and every time there's a covenant involved, there's got to be intimacy involved. Mm -hmm. But now we've shifted from dealing so much with intimacy as, as some of the other aspects of covenant. And tune in again next time for great and mighty things. <laughs>